Hyundai is finally offering a hybrid option for the midsize SUV market segment. With this, the MY25 Tucson. You still can get the 1.6 turbo and you can still get the two litre petrol, naturally aspirated petrol, which I wouldn't recommend if you're a bit of a performance enthusiast because it is quite slow, but it is good to have that option there if you just want something that's not very complex, front wheel drive, and it's probably gonna last in terms of long-term reliability. So we're here at the Australian media launch event. We've driven a few different variants, um, including the top inline model and the base model. Here I'm testing the Elite, which is the mid-spec version. I thought I'd grab the all-wheel drive model so we can do the 0 to 100 and see what it's like, um, because I've tested the Kia Sportage, which shares pretty much the same powertrain as this, same platform, but it does have a slightly different electrical system. This has got the newer system compared with the Kia, but I'll get to that a bit later on. In terms of the design, only very minor trimming updates, including a new black badge on some models, a new paint color option called pine green matte, and some trim changes inside. So Hyundai is pretty late to the market with a hybrid option for this segment. Like you can get the Nissan X-Trail as a hybrid, you can get the Mitsubishi Outlander as a hybrid, you can get the Toyota RAV4 of course with a hybrid, and recently the Kia Sportage. Now Hyundai has got an option there. This basically replaces the turbo diesel. Um, I spoke to Hyundai, they said last year the diesel accounted for about 28% of Tucson sales, which I think is pretty big, you know, it's almost a third of sales. This is going to replace that. So I don't know if the market is happy to lose the diesel for the sake of a hybrid. At the end of the day, this has got more power and the fuel consumption is lower. Under the bonnet there, we have the familiar 1.6 turbo petrol. It produces around 132 kilowatts itself. It is one of the newer versions of this engine, so smart stream technology. But yeah, it's, it's basically carried over from quite a few years ago. And then it's paired with a 1.49 kilowatt hour battery powering an electric motor with all systems working and running at their max, you've got 172 kilowatts. That's a tiny bit more than the Kia Sportage hybrid, which offers 169 kilowatts. Hyundai says that it's basically down to the updated electrical system. So this features the latest technology, whereas the Sportage is running slightly older technology. Either way, that's a decent amount of power for a vehicle in this class, a midsize SUV, 170 kilowatts-ish, and it goes pretty good. We'll go for a drive in a minute and I'll show you. Inside there are some updates, including the new look twin screen dash. So you've got two digital screens there with a separator in the middle, but it's kind of all seamless and looks like one curved panel. Very nice, very elegant. Got some shelving on this side, plenty of storage down below as well. Open center console, charging options, and then a wireless charger, at least on this Elite variant. There's some options there for the drive modes and so on. New steering wheel too. This steering wheel is much nicer than the previous steering wheel in my opinion. And it's also got the switch to a column mounted gear shifter. Decent amount of room inside. It's probably one of the biggest in its class actually, especially in terms of length. You've got a lot of rear leg room and heaps of boot space. But yeah, in the front it feels open and airy. And with the new horizontal dash theme, so this sort of runs all the way across basically, it just feels more spacious and open. The new touchscreen is nice. It runs Hyundai's latest software. Pretty quick and responsive. Got plenty of options there to play around with. I won't go through all of the boring details, but yeah, heaps of options. You've also got a fully digital instrument cluster and you can access the different drive modes just down here. You've got sport and eco. And then for the driver, you've got an adjustable gauge cluster. So they can go through different um, change the display options if you want to, power distribution, battery level, which is quite good actually. Some hybrids, so I'm not talking about plug-in hybrids, but normal conventional hybrids, uh, they don't actually show you how much battery you've got left. So it doesn't really matter, but if you go right down, if you're in a situation where you're driving uphill a lot and you really use that battery, you will start to, or you will eventually lose power uh, like in all hybrids. Um, but yeah, some, some of them don't have the display there. You might think, what's going on? I've, I've lost power. So at least you know you can keep an eye on it. Tire pressure monitoring as well, even on this Elite model. And yeah, back around to the trip information. I like this climate control panel. It's very easy to use. You can jump to straight away the temperature, aircon on or off, um, recycle, recirculate, or whatever you want to call it. Heated seats as well. 
then you've got your main menu options up here. Very practical, very easy to use while on the go. You don't have to you know, dig around in a touch screen just to change the climate settings. So that's awesome to have that as a separate panel, I think. And then, yeah, as I said, plenty of leg room in the back and headroom is good as well. And this seat actually reclines just with that little adjustment tab there. And you can, you've got a few different settings you can have it set at. Once you're in, I've got plenty of room. I mean, I'm only short, 170 centimeters, but yeah, I've got heaps of headroom and I don't need any more leg room at all. That's, that's plenty. You've got twin USB-C ports down the bottom and kind of semi-adjustable climate vents. At least they're split into two, so you can adjust it either side. And cup holders and bottle holders in the doors. Yeah, very practical setup in here. Perfect for families, busy families, um, running around the shopping and so on, going to sporting events and all that sort of thing. Up at the back, fully electric tailgate, even for the Elite model. You've got heaps of boot space, and I love the way they've got those pull tabs on the side there, so you can just flip down the seats from the back. You don't have to worry about walking around to the side. 12 volt socket there. And then under the floor, like with the Kia Sportage, you've got a dual level floor. So you can adjust this, you can take this board out and put it along this rail here, but it does clip the, the jack there. So I think that's a bit of a design fault. Same with the Sportage. So when you put the board down, it just sits on that. I mean, it doesn't matter. It still sits on it anyway, and you get a bit of extra room. But yeah, I think they need to adjust that jack. This example's also got a nice little cargo net to keep things secure as well as some tie hooks down below all right let's take it for a spin now see how it goes as i said having four-wheel drive as an option i think is is definitely beneficial because you can take this down to the snow go on camping trips and so on and you just get that extra grip i find that even with the hyundai but as well as the sportage that we tested not that long ago the front wheel drive system with the instant torque of the electric motor in the wet it just spins so easily the front wheels even with the traction control left on, it's, it's just constantly grabbing it. And it just, yeah, it's not ideal, I don't think. Whereas with the all-wheel drive system, I've already done some driving, it's just much better. And it doesn't have the torque steer as well. So when you put your foot down in the front-wheel drive version, it definitely tugs at the wheels and uh, it tugs at the front wheels and pulls it around a bit. Whereas with four-wheel drive, it's just straight and stable. A new function for the MY25 Tucson is a system that easily or very quickly quietens down the speed limit warning. So you've got your little speed limit sign there. That's picked up the last sign that it saw. So I've just pulled out of a, uh, a sort of resort where the speed limit is 10 or something. I'm, I don't think it's actually picked that up, but sometimes what happens is it'll pick up the 10 in there and then you pull out here and it'll drive down the road and this is about 80 or 100 kilometers an hour down here. Um, and then it will just keep beeping at you saying you're speeding it's still 10. So the way to quieten that down really quickly is to hold down the, the mute button on the steering wheel here. So that's for the volume control. You hold that down for three seconds or something. Speed limit information function has been selected. And what that does is it'll still show the speed recommendation, but it won't give you that audible warning. And then you can go into here as well, vehicle driver assistance. And then in here, you've got the four different options, like some of the other latest Hyundai and Genesis models. So you can actually leave speed limit information there, um, or you can have the, the warning on, so it lets off, uh, sounds off a buzzer, or you can turn it off completely. Speaking of safety systems, the MY25 Tucson does not come with a driver monitoring camera, fortunately. Uh, the, the five star ANCAP rating still carries over from the previous test, whenever that was in 2021 or 2022. Uh, but it doesn't need to a crash test again because this is not an all new model, it's just a facelift. So all new vehicles, uh, they need to have a driver monitoring camera in order to uh, have ex access to the five star rating. Whereas this, yeah, it can still carry a five star rating because it is just a facelift. Another safety system that's easy to turn off is the lane keep assist. So I'm driving on a country road now, it, it constantly is, or pretty much constantly adjusting me in the lane. I mean, this area right here is straight, but when you hit like a winding section, you know, it's, imp it's impossible to stay perfectly parallel with the line. Well, not impossible, but not many people drive like that. So it will try to fight you and, and push you back into the perfect center um, pretty much constantly. And you can turn that off easily just by hitting down, uh, holding down this button 
and the little symbol there will turn orange. So that way when you're driving, you know, you come up against the line or something like that, or you get close to the outside there as you're going around a corner, it's not going to quickly, you know, tug the steering wheel and, and put you off. So it is good to have that option there to turn that off very quickly and easily. Enough of the safety systems though, how about this powertrain? Well, the first thing you'll notice is the instant torque. You don't need to put your foot down much and you get this surge from behind. Even though the engine might not be revving, you still got that surge because the electric motor is, is doing its thing. And you've actually got a surprising amount of, I'll just slow down, top end punch. So this features a six speed automatic, it's not a CVT, thankfully. You put your foot down, it's already picking up without the engine revving, but as the engine's revving and going through the gears, it really pulses and surges you forward with each gear because of that electric motor just giving that, that instant shove. It actually feels, yeah, it feels pretty quick. We'll do some zero to 100 testing in a minute. I'll try and find a nice flat area with a 100 km an hour speed zone. I've got the V-Box with me. Um, this is the all-wheel drive model, as I said, so it might not be as quick as the front-wheel drive Sportage that we tested not that long ago, mainly because the all-wheel drive system obviously adds weight um, and, and actual powertrain load, so sometimes all-wheel drive does make it a tiny bit slower, but I think with the, uh, the, the added traction, it's, it's worth it. The, the payoff is worth it, or the drawback is worth it, even if it is a fraction slower, but we'll see anyway. Another interesting feature is when you've got it in eco mode, so you've got eco sport and my drive, when you've got it in eco mode, the paddle shifters here change the level of regen. So you've got three different levels. In other words, you've got kind of almost one pedal driving where it will break the, slow down the vehicle to regenerate the battery or re-energize the battery. But in sport mode, these paddles just turn into gear shifters. So you can play around with the six speed or automatic just like you would in a regular non-hybrid vehicle. In terms of the handling, yeah, this is a great vehicle to drive. Good suspension setup, I think. It is, you know, a little bit firm, but I like that. I reckon it's good on country roads because you can absorb those bumps, those nasty potholes and things, and it's not gonna, you know, bounce around and lose stability. It'll actually just catch the bump nice and braced and tight. I wouldn't say it's a super engaging steering system. You know, it kind of just, there's a bit of weight happening as you turn in, which is fine, but it just kind of just, yeah, it feels a little bit numb. You don't really know what's going on underneath, but the Tucson has kind of always been like that. Overall though, it's, it's, a, it's a pleasure to drive. It really is. Like it's just smooth, it's comfortable. It's not out of its comfort zone. You can take on corners pretty quickly with bumps and so on in the on the corner, and it will just remain very true, stable, and confident, which is what you want at the end of the day. This is not a sports car, so you can't expect absolute sports car engagement and handling. But yeah, just then there was a bit of a bump there, right on the corner, another one, and just stays very stable and straight. In terms of the economy, I'm averaging 6.7, but we have been thrashing these around at quite a bit. I think when we pulled in, it was about, oh, sorry, when we started them up, it was about 5.9, which is not bad at all for the real world, and considering this has a 1.6 turbo under there as well, working away. So this is not just a boring, you know, naturally aspirated engine, you've actually got a little turbo engine under there, um, also supplying that 265, or it's 265 newton meters as well, which is a decent amount of torque uh, just by itself. With the upper spec model, you do get a side monitoring camera. So when you put the indicator on, it will come up with the uh, the side view, but this is just the Elite and it doesn't come with that. All right, let's find somewhere to do some zero to 100 testing and see what it goes like. I'll do a few different runs, including brake holding or tor torque loading the engine up on the brake, and I'll try just flat flattening the, uh, the throttle. I forgot to say, sorry, there's a bit of a mark on my forehead. Uh, with the turbo engine, it actually sounds good too. So a lot of hybrids at the moment, they're just naturally aspirated and they just, yeah, sound pretty boring. Whereas with the turbo, you've got just that little bit of bass in the background, bit of sportiness, which I think adds to the driving experience a little bit.